time, while you still swallow what she has just said, I will be just introducing our speaker for the morning. Dr. Andrew B. Campbell, Dr. ABC, is a graduate of the University of Toronto with a PhD in Educational Leadership, Policy, and Diversity. He is presently a faculty member in the Master of Teaching program at the University of Toronto and an adjunct assistant professor at Queen's University online. He is an Ontario certified teacher and I've been an educator for over 25 years in Jamaica, <laughs> the Bahamas and Canada. He has authored two books, Teachable Moments with Dr. ABC, A Spoonful for the Journey, 2015, and The Invincible, sorry, The Invisible Student in the Jamaican Classroom, 2018. His research and teaching focus on issues of equity, diversity, inclusion, leadership, LGBTQ issues, and teacher performance evaluation. He has presented at numerous peer-reviewed academic conferences and has delivered many presentations as a motivational speaker, keynote, and workshop facilitator. He loves people food, fashion, and traveling. You make your own judgment after he comes. Put your hands together for Dr. ABC. What should I say? Good morning, everyone. Good. It's still morning, right? Good morning, everyone. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Okay, that may not work. So, I'm honored today to be your guest speaker, you're one of your keynote presenters, as we talk about black excellence and the importance of black excellence and why we even mention black excellence. So we want to start off by acknowledging, like the wonderful Maya just presented, give her a clap for me please, that was really, really good stuff. As a matter of fact, Maya, you actually completed maybe the first two slides of my presentation, setting the foundation for us as young people to understand why we celebrate Black History Month, why we celebrate Black Excellence, why we said hashtag Black Excellence. And because we want to start off by acknowledging the reality that many of you face certain barriers, and Maya talked a lot about the barriers that we face, systematic barriers. We're trying to struggle to find our, our space and our place within schools. And so for many of us, we are kind of over the Black History Month kind of celebration. If you hear out there, people say, oh, I'm over Black History Month. And for me, many of us, as I said, we are over Black History Month and the check boxes that happen during this month. You know, the many photo ops that the politicians want. Many of us are sick and tired of that. But anything to do with us, there's always a constant fight or to be seen, to be heard, or to have some real action. So we, many of us, we are sick and tired of the performances. And it's funny because I use a picture of, of um, Black Panther, the whole idea of Wakanda, to show you that it's funny because many of you, your first introduction or your introduction to black excellence is a movie. But black excellence goes way beyond that. And so do we have a performance today? Actually, no. It's not a performance. It's a reality from someone like myself who identifies as black and black excellence to speak to you all. So sometimes things are, are very symbolic. They are very performative and they are sometimes even token. But those things sometimes they are necessary. They are necessary for us to remind us of why we're doing this. So it is more than just a month. It is, the, it is the myth and the visions and the values, the custom, the traditions that we have to pass down to generations to understand who you are. And so for me, I am here for four reasons today. Four reasons. Number one is, um, so why am I here? Four reasons, like I said. No, I can't afford to be tired of our black excellence stories. I cannot. And no, I cannot afford to allow systematic oppression to erase my identity and history. And the two most important reasons is that I am black 365 days of the year. I was black yesterday, I'm black today, 
and I have a funny feeling tomorrow I'll still be black. And because of that, I have to make sure that I share my story with you. And so finally, the best reason why I'm here today is I want to inspire and ignite a fire in all of you to continue what our ancestors fought for. Yes, we are not in physical chains anymore, but lots of chains are still around us. And so we want to be mindful of that. So for me, what am I going to talk about? All righty. Okay. So we're going to talk about 10 things I want to give you quickly. The first one is know who you are. It's important to know who you are. A lot of us, we, we forget we don't know who we are. We must know who we are. Because if you don't know who you are, people will tell you who you are. People will say to you, you're dumb. You're stupid. You're silly. Go sit there. Go stand there. Be my side chick, as they said nowadays. Be this, be that. When you know who you are, people cannot tell you that. People cannot intimidate you. For me, who am I? Who am I? And a number of us, we have to, we have, we have to be careful that we remind teachers, this is for you actually, teachers, that you have to remind your students who they are. You have to tell them who they are. You have to teach them who they are. They are more than just that. I used to have this thing that I said, I'm a star. Because some of us, we come from homes. Some of us, some of you, you come from homes where you constantly hear you are ugly. You're too black. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're that so gay. What about speaking life to each other? What about speaking encouragement to each other? What about saying to each other, I like your braids. I like your skin. I love your dark, beautiful eyes. I love, you know, your, your melanin is on fleek. I like that. If you don't know who you are, people will tell you who you are. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Growing up, I was called many names. Oftentimes, these names were hurtful and deliberately set out to cause me pain and punishment. But my father, rest in peace, he passed away in 2008. He had his own name for me. He said to me, you're a star. That's what my father said. He said, you're a star. So someone called me a sissy. Daddy said, I'm a star. Someone says, I'm silly. Daddy says, I'm a star. Someone said, I'm poor. Daddy says, I'm a star. Someone says, you don't have nice clothes and you wear your brother's clothes. Daddy said, I'm a star. He pumped so much positive energy in me, it never left me. I knew I was a star. I knew I was a boss. I knew I was handsome. I knew I was bright. I knew I was intelligent. I knew I was brilliant. I knew I was going to be a winner. I knew I'll get A. I knew I was special. I knew I was going to graduate. I knew because my dad told me so. My father could not afford a lot of stuff, but he gave me self-esteem and self-confidence. And that is why many people have problems with me. You know the reason why? Because they can't unstar me. There's no such word. I just created it. Because I'm a star. So you have to know who you are. Be careful. Know who you are. The next tip I want to say to you is dream big. Dream big. When I was a young boy in Jamaica, I wanted to travel. Never been to the airport at 21. Age of 21 was the first time I went on a plane. Oh, yeah. None of you are 21 yet. Some of you have traveled half the world already. First time I went on a plane, I was 21, and I saved my own money. Today, I've been to se over 17 different countries. I didn't say 17 towns or 17 cities. I said countries with my own money because I had big dreams. That's me there in Paris, me there in, in Vietnam, me there in London. At the age of 16, at the age of 16, I left high school. 16. I mean, if you're 16, you're still here. Age of 16, you're still learning, you're still growing. 16, I left high school. And I started to work at 16. Work. Real job. Real job. Why? Because my mom said, I can't afford to send you to college, so you have to get a job. I got a job. And I saved my money. And at 17, I started to go to college part-time. So I worked in the day, went to school in the night finished my teacher's diploma. 
Went ahead, got a job, started teaching in the day, went to school in the night, finished my bachelor's degree. Notice I haven't said it full time in college yet or university. Then I went on and started still working, teaching all day long, doing a lot of stuff because I'm always doing stuff. Start my master's online and part time, did it. Then came to Canada 2008, went into my PhD part time, had a full time job. And I went to school in the evening, in the nights, 5.30 to 8.30 many nights at University of Toronto studying to get my PhD. So when I say Dr. ABC, it's not just an acronym, it's not a cute name, I actually have a real PhD. And that's me there on graduation day, I'm sure you see me, that's a tall person in the front there, you can't miss me. Don't try to miss me, okay? So that's it, graduation. Doing it, going after my dreams, going after the dreams that I have, going after the dreams. Number three, work hard. I want us to work hard. Believe in hard work, everybody. Ticker's giving a little attitude, but that's fine. Work hard. Teachers, I want you to be careful how you compliment our black and brown students. You have to make sure you owe them to high expectation and let them know they can, let them know it's possible, let them know they are able to do that. And then for students, for your own good, I want you to notice that success takes work. Success is not an app. It's not something you just snap your finger and, you know, right click and it happens. It doesn't work like that. A lot of stuff you have on your phone, everything happens on your phone today. Success takes work. Success takes effort. Long ago, from what, I think I was in grade two or grade three, I learned a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And it said, the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards through the night. It takes effort. Number four, use your gifts and your talents. Not all of us are going to be medical doctors and teachers and pilots. All of us can, but all of us can be great. All of us can be excellent. All of us can be amazing. What do you want to be an hairdresser, a designer? What do you want to be an inventor, a basketball player, a singer, a dancer? All of us. Thank you. All of us. Amazing. What is life, honey? What is life? Can we give the lady with, for the water clap, please? You can be, thank you so much. You can be anything you want to be. Anything you want to be, you can be. Who's going to be the next chef? Who's going to be the next designer? Who's going to be the next pilot? Who's going to be the next Tyra Banks, Will Smith? Who's going to be the next mayor? It's right in this room. Jennifer Utz, you see on there, she plays seventh in American Idol. Today, she's worth over $2 million as a singer, an actor. 20, sorry, over $20 million. I want you to think about who you are and where you're going and what you need to be excellent, what you need to be amazing. What do you need to be amazing? Tip number five, be courageous. Maya just did an entire amazing, courageous speech, speech just now. And for those who don't know, on the, that lady on the picture, that's Aria Tubman. Born into slavery. She, when you talk about the Underground Railroad, that's the woman. That's the person who, have, who assisted over 70 unarmed enslaved people to escape, became an armed scout and spy for the Union Army. In her later years, she was an activist in the struggle for women's suffrage. That over there is a courageous woman. That's what we call in Jamaica a bad gal. That's a bad gal, a powerful gal, a winning gal, a hero gal, a courageous gal. That's there. So when you fight each other in the streets and somebody catch it on Instagram and Facebook, you're not a bad girl, you're a crazy woman. <laughs> Fighting and embarrassing your parents and yourself, you're not bad, you're crazy. That's a bad girl up there. So I want you to understand that courageous is important to have courage. And we are going to have to engage in courageous conversations about race, about privilege, about oppression, about systematic oppression. You, you said it, about police brutality about all of that, about why is it that you don't see yourself in the storybooks? 
We have to have courageous conversation with the board about that. How are we going to put these things in the curriculum so you can see yourself represented? Many of us don't come from privilege, so we struggle. So we need that courageous conversation. But I want you to remember today, your responsibility is to be courageous enough to try. Be courageous enough to desire more. Be courageous enough to speak up for yourself and speak for others. Absolutely. That courage is necessary. I'm going to tell you something. There are many times I am led to speak at events. It's the first I'm coming to your school. I'm seeing hundreds, literally in this room, hundreds of faces. I have had the privilege to do that many times. And there are times that I'm saying things and my voice literally trembles. Because I know what I'm going to say, they may not have me back. It's my living. I make a living from speaking also. I'm an educator. I'm a keynote speaker. I do workshops. But what I will never do is to water down the truth, my truth. Absolutely. Never you water down the truth, your truth. So it takes courage. It takes courage. The next one I want you to think about is hold yourself, as I said, to high expectations. So beginning, I said, teachers at the back, I talked to you, I said to you, teachers, hold your students to high expectations. I'm saying to you now, hold yourself to high expectations. Right there, it's a bunch of black inventors. We're waiting on you. You are going to be the next inventor. We're waiting on you. Hold yourself to high expectations. Surprise the doubters. Surprise the people who think you're going to be nothing. There goes this boy walking down the street. He's going to end up being nothing. And you hear that. You hear that. I'm sure you heard that. You have gone into a room and they don't know you're coming and they're talking bad about you. You've heard that. I'm going to give you my secret because I've experienced that many times. My secret is I disappoint them. So when they think I'm going to be nothing, I am all that. As I used to say back in school, I guess you don't say it anymore. We are all that and about the chips. That's an old joke. I'm not as young as I look. It's good genes, good skin, good God. Okay? So disappoint the doubters. Disappoint the doubters. Disappoint the people who say you're going to fail. These are the inventors there. Black inventors. Disappoint the persons who say you're going to fail. Right now, we need a lot of black doctors. We need black doctors. We need black doctors that are culturally aware. There's a whole research going on about how black people are disenfranchised and misdiagnosed and not given the right stuff when they go to medical attention. We need black mental health workers. There's a big need for black therapists who understand where we are coming from. We need black excellence and we need you. You are the person we need. And that is why I don't hold back when I talk about black excellence. Because we need you. That's my dining table. It doesn't look like a dining table, right? It looks like a dining table to you? No. no, that's my dining table. Well, that was my dining table years ago, back in 2012, when I was studying for my PhD. I put that picture there to show you the effort and the work that is necessary. And it's important for you to ask for help. Ask your teachers for help, your neighbors, your parents, your uncle, your aunt. Ask for help. Ask organizations, grassroots organizations that are set up for you. Ask for help. You have to ask for help so you can be amazing. The whole idea, the whole idea of, um, we talk about it takes a village to raise a child. That is a indigenous and African way of thinking. It takes a village to raise a child. What many of us are learning is that we have to be competitive to win. So in order for me to win, I have to make sure you lose. That's not a truth. That's a lie. That's a lie. In order for you to be great, the other girl has to fail. In order for you to be a doctor, the other boy has to fail. We all can be great at the same time. There is enough space for all of us to be amazing. There's enough space for all of us to be amazing. I want you to think about that. Enough space for all of us to be amazing. And remember to be thankful. I took that from your, from your page. I think this was the one I took from your Twitter page. 
Thankfulness. I took it from your Twitter page. Being thankful. And then it's a big one. Surround yourself with good people. When I was growing up, as a little child, you know, we get spanking. Back in Jamaica, you get a little spanking for doing wrong. We don't spank here, but we get spanking growing up. And most, if I've gotten 10 spanking in my life, maybe eight of those is following bad company. Because we love company. I love company. But we have to have the right company. We have to have the right company. People who take care of you. People who mean you well. People who motivate you to do the right thing. People who inspire you to do the right thing. The other day I was listening to the news and I was so upset. I was just so upset. There was a bank robbery in Vaughan. I'm sure you heard about it. A bank robbery in Vaughan. And the bank robbers were, three, were 13, 15, and 16. I don't know who they are. I don't know their names. I don't know where they're from. I know nothing about them. When I heard the news, I was so upset. I just want to throw something in the TV, but I couldn't throw it because it's my TV. I don't want to break my TV. I was upset because I'm thinking to myself, these young men need someone to remind them, you don't have to be the bank robber. You could be the bank manager. Why be the bank robber when you can be the bank manager? Surround yourself with good people. I like this picture. Anybody recognize this picture? This is Miss Nigeria. When Miss Jamaica won Miss World last year. Oh yes, Miss Jamaica won Miss World. Black excellence. Give us a clap. Black excellence. Black beauty. I'm looking at faces right now. I'm looking at faces right now. And some of you are amazing and stunningly beautiful. I'm not saying that to make you feel good. I mean that. Stunning, beautiful. Have you tell your classmate how beautiful they are? Have you tell the young men how handsome they are? You must speak life into each other. Speak life into each other. And everybody was cheering because they said Miss Nigeria was more happy than anybody else and she didn't want, she didn't win. She was happy for Miss Jamaica. And you know what happened on Facebook after that? Everybody said they wanted a friend like Miss Nigeria. You want somebody to clap for you. If you want somebody to clap for you, to clap with you, surround yourself with good people who mean you well. Good people who mean you well. The next one, number nine, we're coming down. Number nine is take care of yourself. I want you to take care of yourself. Some of you don't take good care of yourself. I remember as a child growing up, you know, you had your shoes. You had your black shoes. I have a black shoes on this morning. You have your shoes on. And I used to have one pair of shoes. I had one pair of shoes. I don't want to tell you how many shoes I have today. One pair. And what you had to do, your mother remind you how to wipe it off, how to polish it, how to shine it, how to put it in a nice space. Some of you, you have to learn how to love yourself more. Some of you have to learn how to love yourself more. You can't survive to be black excellence if you don't love yourself. Love yourself. Be kind to yourself. I saw this picture on one of my friends on um, Facebook, Leah Moncartier. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a black therapist. Self-care reminders. How to take care of yourself. How to be kind to yourself. How to be thoughtful to yourself. It's important for you to do that. The next thing I want to tell you is to celebrate each win. That's from your Twitter page. Celebrate each win. You are winners. Come on, yeah, give yourself a clap. That's from your Twitter page. Come on, give your, give your guys a clap. That's your page. You have to know to celebrate each win. Be thankful for each stage in your life. You are in good school. Amazing qualified teachers. You can't come through the door every day just upset and angry. You're in what, grade 12? So I could say, you come to school piss on arrival. You're angry. You're upset. You're mad. I want you to learn how to take better care of yourself. 
Take better care of yourself. Be thankful. Celebrate each win. Celebrate each win. I always tell the story. I like champagne. Champagne is a drink. None of you drink champagne, right? No, you don't. None of you drink. Really? None of you drink champagne. Champagne is a drink of celebration. You go to a wedding, they pop the champagne. Somebody gets engaged, they pop the champagne. Graduation day from university, I'm guaranteed you're going to pop the champagne. Champagne is a drink of celebration. I always have a bottle of champagne back home in my fridge. Always. I celebrate. I celebrate every single way and every single time. I don't, I'm not waiting until, until a day when I am no longer able to celebrate. I celebrate now. And my final tip to you, my final tip to you, be a representation of black excellence. You, I want you to be a representation of black excellence. With the increasing negative stereotypes and cultural misappropriation, I like, to, I like that word more than even cultural appropriation, discriminatory images, constantly being promoted, projected. We need representation. Yes, we have Nancy Mandela, we have Barack Obama, we have Viola Davis, we have Donovan Bailey, we have Rosa Parks, we have Nina Simone, we have Oprah Winfrey, we have Marcus Garvey, we have all of that. But you know what we need? We also need Paul and Simone and Anita and Shaquina and Ofemi and Mohammed and Shaquille and Alex and Tafari. We need you. We need you. So when we think of black exit, go ahead, go ahead. So when you think, when you think of black excellence, don't be thinking that somebody's going to come here and they're going to be black excellence and they're going to speak to you, speak to me, and I'm going to understand what black excellence is. I want to leave this with you. We need black excellence and the best representation that we have to secure black excellence is going to be you. And that is why I take the time out to come here today to speak to you, to let you realize that black excellence begins with you. Thank you so much for listening.